Good morning, everyone. Uh, I know we're right at 10 o'clock. We're going to wait just another minute or two, give a chance for a few more people to join in, uh, and then we'll get started. So just hang tight and we'll get started soon. All right, I think we're gonna have a few more people probably trickle in here, but I will go ahead and get started. Uh, so welcome everyone to another Wellness uh, Well Bama webinar. Uh, I've done quite a few of these now. I uh, always enjoy doing these, but uh, I'm Charles Burroughs. I'm the Fitness Services Coordinator over at University Recreation. Uh, and today I wanna to talk about how to navigate the weight room. <clears throat> um, I think this is a really important topic because uh, I think of, of all the different places or areas in fitness, um, whether it's in the gym or, or really just in general, uh, the weight room in particular can be one of the most intimidating places to go into. Uh, I think a lot of times we, we try to avoid that area of the gym, um, and that can be for a lot of different reasons, whether it's intimidating or we feel like it's, it's not particularly for us. Uh, so that's going to be the, the main topic for today. Uh, you know, my goal for this is to uh, make it more comfortable and, and more inviting and, and to understand uh, some of the benefits that, that come from using a weight room, whether it's uh, the rec center, obviously I'm a little biased, I think the rec center here is great, uh, or really any gym that has a weight room. And so while I'm going to be talking a little bit more about like the weight room that we have here, uh, the ideas and principles and things I'm going to talk about really apply to, to just about any gym. Um, and, you know, like I said, I'm the fitness services coordinator here. And so just a, a little bit about myself is I've been working in health and fitness for about eight, nine years now. Uh, and it's something that I'm super passionate about and I love. Uh, you know, I think if, if there's one big fault in the fitness industry that applies to just about all of them is that uh, over time, we kind of lose that, that empathy that we have for people who are just coming to the gym. Uh, in other words, we kind of forget uh, the, the intimidation and the, the foreignness that comes to going into the gym for the first time. Uh, you know, there are a lot of different uh, parts of, of exercise that are challenging and uncomfortable. And, and part of the reason is that it's an area uh, that it's very foreign and new and kind of alien, right? I mean, the gym is like unlike anything else. There's all these crazy machines. Uh, some of them look like torture devices. Uh, and with everything else going on in our heads when we go into a gym, uh, last thing we want to think about is, is how, uh, you know, how intimidating it can be and, and how foreign everything is. So the goal of this is to try to make you feel a little bit more comfortable with those spaces. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. And the first place I actually want to start here 
uh, is real quickly just talk about the benefits of resistance training. Uh, if you've heard me talk before, then I've probably mentioned this, but I really think it's helpful to touch on it again. Because uh, I think a lot of times people say, uh, well, I don't need to do resistance training. That's not part of my goal. Uh, I just want to do more cardio. I just want to lose weight. And they often forget or, or maybe don't even know uh, some of the many benefits that come from resistance training. And, and when I say resistance training, what I'm actually talking about is any kind of exercise uh, where the goal of the exercise is to train our muscles with resistance. So whether that's a body weight exercise, like a squat or a push up, or doing something with weights or bands or any kind of really machine, like I said, where we're having to do resistance, we're having to push against something, that is resistance training. Uh, and there are a lot of different benefits. I think the first one on here is probably the most well-known uh, and often as a result, the reason people kind of stay away from it. Uh, and that's that uh, resistance training can increase strength and muscle size. Uh, and I say it can increase strength and muscle size because uh, while resistance training is needed to do these things, uh, you're not always necessarily going to gain a lot of muscle from re doing resistance training. A, a lot of times I hear clients say, I don't want to do weights. I don't want to do anything like that because I'm worried about getting bulky. I'm worried about getting too big. And that's not my goal. Uh, but in, in actuality, most people who do resistance training aren't going to gain a lot of muscle. And if they do, they're not going to gain it very fast. So it's not one of those things where you go in, you start lifting weights, and then tomorrow you're all of a sudden big and bulky. It's a very slow and gradual process. Uh, and it's actually going to be very beneficial for a lot of other goals that you have. Um, so that is one benefit, though, is it does increase strength and it does help build muscle. Um, I would say most people might build just a little bit of muscle. Uh, and for most of those, when we see the effects of, of that muscle being built, it's usually in the form of like a slight tone or, or a little bit increase that we see physically. Uh, but again, it, it's not something where if we, you know, train for six months or a year, all of a sudden we've gained a lot of muscle. That, that very rarely happens. Um, but other benefits of resistance training are that it helps to enhance our balance and coordination. Uh, I put those two together because really balance is a result of coordination. And when I say coordination, I'm really just talking about our brain's ability to control our body. Uh, so, you know, those, those nerve impulses that say, hey, I want to flex this muscle or move this hand and our ability to actually do that and do it efficiently. So when I say coordination, that's really that interaction between our brains and our muscles. And the more that we do resistance training, the more efficient that system becomes. Uh, that gives us faster reaction time. It gives us ability to uh, control our body better. You know, if we want to step over something, uh, if we do regular resistance training, we have better control of our bodies. That's a very uh, nice benefit that comes from resistance training. Uh, also, resistance training helps to improve soft tissue strength. And when I say this, I'm not necessarily talking about muscles since we already talked about that, uh, but also all those other structures in our body, those tendons, ligaments, even the fascia, which is this tissue that surrounds our organs and muscles, joints, uh, all these tissues become stronger when we do resistance training because resistance training is putting stress on these tissues and as a result, they get stronger uh, and improve over time. So a, a very nice benefit to resistance training is we actually are better at preventing injury and basically make our bodies stronger uh, in terms of dealing with stress. So. Uh, resistance training helps our body to deal with to stress and impact better. Uh, and that's across all ages. It doesn't matter how old you are. The research shows that whether you're 15 or 95, you can experience all these benefits from resistance training. Uh, you can also see increase in bone density. So once again, looking at uh, stronger bones can help prevent breaks and fractures. And then also another nice side benefit of resistance training is it speeds up our metabolism. So if we do have a goal of, of losing fat, losing weight, uh, resistance training can actually help accelerate that process because we burn more calories uh, when we start to add a little bit of muscle to our body and we improve that coordination aspect that helps to utilize our muscle more. Um, so those are just some of the benefits to resistance training. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, I always love questions. So I'm going to be doing my best to check both the Q&A and the chat. Please feel free at any time to shoot a question if you have uh, 
a question, something you want to talk about in regards to any of these topics we're going over. Um, if you ask a question that's maybe not super relevant to what I'm talking about at the time, don't worry, I'll still answer it. Uh, my goal is to have some time at the end to go over those things. Uh, but once again, please feel free to ask questions. I'm more than happy to stop and answer anything you got. All right, so we went ahead and talked about the benefits of resistance training, but why utilize the weight room? Um, the truth of the matter is, based on that definition of resistance training, we can do that just about anywhere. I mean, I could hop up on my desk right now and start doing squats or push-ups or something like that, and that would be resistance training. Uh, and, and it's true that you don't have to have a weight room to do that, or even a designated space. You don't have to have it. Uh, that's the nice thing about resistance training. And, uh, you know, the ancient Romans, they used to do resistance training. And a lot of times that was simply finding a, a big boulder or a large log and lifting that repeatedly to get stronger. Uh, we can do it that way. Uh, but there are some reasons to utilize the weight room. And I think if we can, uh, understand these reasons and then start to become more comfortable with the space, we realize that it's actually a very useful space uh, for resistance training. Uh, I just saw a question, so I'm gonna check it real quick. Okay, uh, I see a question about doing a hot workout. I'm gonna get to that towards the end. Uh, if I get too off track, I might never come back. So I will get to that, that's a good question. Um, so why utilize the weight room? Um, first off is convenience, and that might be one of the biggest ones here, uh, is quite simply, you know, everything you need is in one place. Um, whether it's uh, this machine or this weight or this band, most of the time it's all going to be in one place. So one simple reason to use a weight room is just that it's, it's all where you need it. Um, another nice thing is that you're able to track your progress easily in a weight room. You know, the biggest problem with going outside and just like grabbing a big rock or going to the store and buying just like one set of dumbbells is it can be hard to track progress or even progress period with that without having other things to use to progress. it. So, you know, maybe you were using the five pound weights before and then you moved up to the seven pound weights. Uh, if you don't have access to those things or if you have a bunch of different weights that aren't labeled, it's really hard to track progress. And if you're a numbers guy like me, then it's really nice to be able to track these things and know that we're making some progress in whatever we're working on, whether that's getting stronger or building up stamina, whatever it is. Uh, but it's really nice to be able to track progress. And so that's one nice aspect of any gym is it's all right there and it's very clearly labeled. Another nice thing is having a variety of equipment. Um, this gives you lots of ways to change up your programming. It gives you a chance to figure out what things in the gym you like, what things you don't. Uh, you know, there might be 10 different back machines, but one of them you like more, it feels better. Uh, it seems to hit the muscles that you're trying to hit better. Uh, so a nice thing about having some sort of, of gym access is just having all these different variety and options that you can access. Um, I don't wanna to dive too much into training itself, but if you continually do this same thing over and over again and you don't change it up, eventually your body is going to adapt to that. And it's going to say, okay, this was hard before, but now I've gotten good at it. And because I've gotten good at it, I'm not going to change uh, the processes in my body anymore. And so it's important that if we have a specific goal, that we continue to change up our programming and what we do to keep our body guessing and adapting. Um, and that's the nice thing about having a weight room is you have all these different things available, whether it's different weights, different machines, um, maybe you did this one back row machine over and over and over again. Uh, you know, maybe you've gone as, up as much weight as you can and you feel like you've hit a, a wall. Well, maybe it's time to go do a back exercise with the dumbbell instead or find a different machine. And, and having a weight room, having access to a weight room allows you to do that. It gives you a lot of different options and variety. Uh, so that is definitely a, a nice aspect uh, to having access to that. <clears throat> Another and in my opinion, this is the biggest one. And that is that a weight room is a dedicated space. It is meant for resistance training. Uh, that means it's, it's probably gonna be safer than just working out in the garage or in the living room. Um, but also it's a space that eliminates distractions. And I think that's really important. Uh, you can think about this almost like the way that you work. Uh, you know, this past year, a lot of us had to work at home because of the pandemic. 
And for a lot of people, it was hard to adapt to that type of working. And uh, in my opinion, a big reason for that is that if you don't find a way to separate those two things, if you don't find a way to dedicate space for work uh, versus everything else, then it's really hard to stay on track and focus, right? If you're sitting on the couch and trying to uh, work on a project on your laptop, but the TV's on, the phone's ringing, and the kid's crying, and the dog's barking, it's very hard to focus. And so the nice aspect of having a weight room is that it's a dedicated space. Now, for some of you, it might just be that you can do that at home. Uh, but I know most people, if they're successful in doing that, it's because they set aside a space in their home that is their dedicated space, where we're in, they're in that space, they're in that zone, and they can focus on what they're trying to achieve. Uh, if you have a lot of distractions, it's really hard to stay on task. And so that's, that's for me, the biggest thing about uh, having access to a weight room is being able to get away from distractions. And actually, uh, it's kind of a, an aside, but for me, working in a gym, in the past at other jobs, I had get a membership at a completely different gym. So that work, which at that gym meant, even when I'm in the weight room is work, I would get a membership elsewhere so that I could go into a different weight room and be able to eliminate those distractions for me. Because for me, working at a gym, uh, my coworkers, my employees are all right there. And so I don't feel like I can really focus. And so, uh, you know, for you guys not working at a gym, finding any kind of dedicated space is going to be really helpful in staying on track and staying focused. All right. Any questions about that before I move forward? All right. Okay. All right. One thing I want to talk about is uh, the weight room as a whole. And bear with me at this picture. I know it looks like a lot, but it's for a good reason. Um, one of the most intimidating parts of walking into a gym is how chaotic it can be. Uh, if you've ever walked into a, a large weight room at like peak time where there's lots of people, it can feel confusing and just chaotic and overwhelming. Um, so the reason I'm talking about this is I wanna actually show that there's actually a lot of logic and organization in any gym. Uh, this is uh, specifically the weight room we have here. I actually got this graphic from one of our facility staff, um, but it's just to serve a purpose uh, and showing you that there's actually a lot of organization here. Um, and, and it's really the case in just about any gym. Uh, every, every weight room, every gym out there is actually very intentionally organized uh, for convenience and to make sense for the people who are in there. And so my hope is that once we kind of dive into this a bit, uh, you could walk into any weight room, look at some of the names on the machines, and all of a sudden you have a good idea of what's going on. And it feels a little bit less overwhelming. Uh, so just as a quick example, um, this whole area of the gym is the free weights area. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about what each of these areas are. Uh, but this whole side of the gym right there is dedicated to free weights or quite simply weight that's easy to move around. It's free moving. Uh, so that's dumbbells, kettlebells, all the kind of weights that are easy to pick up and move around. It means that there's a lot of open space. Um, and we'll get more to that here in a bit. But that whole area is just for that. And so you could walk into, I would say 99% of gyms and you're gonna find a free weight area that's just for that. And when you know that, you know that, okay, I can go to that area and there's gonna be specific spaces that I can use. Uh, and then you have a good idea of what kind of exercise you can do there. And again, we'll kind of get to that more in a bit. Uh, there's also an entire row of just lower body machines. And again, almost every gym is gonna have this. They're gonna have an area that's all lower body stuff in a nice little row or a nice little area. And so once you find one lower body machine, you've probably found them all, but a very good chance of that. Uh, for us, we have a chest and shoulder area, and this is very, very common. You're gonna find machines that basically target all the push muscles in your upper body. So the shoulders, the triceps, the chest, they're all gonna typically be very close together. So once again, if you find one, you're probably close to all of them. <clears throat> Uh, one kind of uh, caveat to this is plate loaded machines. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the difference in machines. But the only reason I point this out is uh, plate loaded machines are kind of specific in that all the different plate, plate loaded machines use the same plates. 
And as a result, they're always grouped together. So while other machines will be categorized by like body part, the only exception is gonna be plate loaded machines. They're always grouped together and that's just because they all use plates. Uh, once you realize that it makes more sense why you might see a plate loaded machine over here that hits the chest while all the other chest machines are all together. And that's just because of, of how weight's put on. Um, we'll talk about that one. Uh, we also have a big section for racks and that's very, very common in gyms. And when I say racks, I'm talking about squat racks or really any kind of, of big rack that uses the big barbells. So the ones that are really wide, um, they usually weigh 45 pounds. All those are usually gonna be close together. So whether that's a bench press or a squat rack, uh, all the racks are usually in one area uh, in almost every single gym. And for us at the rec center, we even have, you kind of notice at the top right, a power room. There's a little room that has only squat racks in it. That's all there's in there. And that's just to keep things nice and organized. Uh, now, one thing that's specific to the rec center, <clears throat> but other gyms will have something like this as well, is we have a whole line of machines that uh, together hit the whole body. So if you were coming into the gym, you knew absolutely nothing. You could come to that first machine down there closest to the front desk go in a straight line and you're gonna hit the whole body. It's a very easy way of knowing uh, how those machines are organized. Um, and the, the only reason that we actually have that, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but the main reason that we have this full body line is they're all the same brand. Uh, so we decided to put those machines all together. Uh, so it's, it kind of has a nice dual purpose of one, being your one-stop shop of if you just go through those machines, uh, you'll hit the whole body, uh, but also they're just the same brand. So that's another thing. Um, but generally speaking, any, any gym is going to have these categories of, of things put together. So the lower body machines will be together most of the time. The chest shoulder machines, plate loaded machines. Um, I've got just a few more things here. Back machines, they're all going to be close together. And then you're going to have some sort of mat area, which is just for stretching and some sort of core exercises, uh, especially like ab exercises. Uh, but again, the reason I'm showing you this is just to give you an idea that there really is a, a organize, there's organization to what may appear like chaos. It's all uh, really well categorized. And I think if you just spend a minute or two in any gym you go into and look around, pay attention to some of the, the titles or the, the, the logos on some of the machines, you'll realize what's going on. And sometimes that might just be asking one or two people and they can show you. Um, one person asked, are there trainers to assist those wanting to get back into the gym after a very long time? Uh, yes, we do have trainers at the gym. Um, that can be something I'll talk a little bit more at the end. Uh, if you're just looking for someone to kind of clarify what the machines do or how they're organized in the gym, uh, anyone working at the front desk should be able to tell you. Uh, so I know at the rec center, we've got, uh, we've got workers walking around, just kind of checking things, cleaning things. Uh, but just about any gym is going to have someone walking around doing that. And if you just stop and be like, hey, can you point me to these machines or that machines? They can also help make sense of uh, what appears to be chaos in the gym. So you can start to feel a little more comfortable and, and moving around. Because um, like I said, there's always going to be an organization to it. Um, but I can talk a little bit more about personal training at the end and, and kind of let you know what we have, uh, as well as what most gyms might offer uh, from that perspective. Okay, um, real quick, I'll talk about a few of these different areas. Uh, so I mentioned a free weights area. Uh, anytime you walk into a gym and you see a bunch of, of benches and racks like this, um, that little tree there to the left with the weights with the, or the bars with the weights on the end, those are just called fixed barbells. Anytime you see an area like this, this is the free weights area. Um, Typically, like I said, there's going to be dumbbells. There's going to be any kind of really free moving weights are going to be in this area. Uh, so you might see kettlebells. You might see what's called an easy bar, uh, which, which looks just like these fixed barbells, but you can put plates on it. Um, any kind of free moving weight is usually going to be in this area. Uh, I always really like this area because it's usually more open. Um, and because it's, it's so open and because there's a lot of benches, it's really a, a, a free for all. You can do just about any exercise in this area uh, with this equipment. So um, a lot of times for some people, this can be a bit overwhelming. 
So if you're brand new to the gym, I'd really suggest trying to, uh, whether it's like meeting with a trainer or finding a program online, but having some sort of game plan before you walk into the free weights area. Because if you just kind of walk in and hope that you uh, just find inspiration when you walk in there, it might be overwhelming. Uh, even myself, who've been doing this a long time, if I don't have a game plan walking to the free weights area, I might end up just like walking out because it's just overwhelming because the, the possibilities in this area of the gym are, are you know, limitless. So I'd really recommend having some sort of idea of what you're going to do before you walk in here. Um, but because there's such a broad range of different weights and options in this area, I would say it's appropriate for anyone. So you're going to see, uh, you know, uh, people of all different fitness levels, shapes, and sizes in this area because uh, it's everywhere from beginner friendly to advanced. It's a really good spot for everyone. It also does mean it's often one of the most crowded places during peak hours. Uh, so personally, I'd like to find a time when it's less busy, but that's just me. Um, and then also another nice thing and a, a key mark of any good freeway area is there's going to be mirrors. And the mirrors aren't there to just uh, admire your muscles or something like that, but it's actually there to make sure your form's correct. Um, sometimes that might just be seeing someone else that does the exercise correctly and then checking yourself in the mirror to see that you're doing it similarly. Uh, but the mirror is a really important feedback tool to tell us when we're doing something wrong or uh, how we can fix it, you know, continually adjusting till we get it right. Uh, without having that cue, you might think you're doing something right and it's actually just way off. Uh, so mirrors are actually a really important aspect uh, to a gym and especially free weight area, just to make sure that we're doing the exercise correctly or appropriately. Uh, one other thing I want to say just free weights, and I'm going to do this with each area, is just give a few quick tips. Uh, for free weight areas, um, and actually this tip applies to any part of the gym, but there's nothing wrong with underestimating weight. Uh, if you're not sure how much to do, or maybe you have an idea, uh, shoot lower for that first set. Um, maybe you're going to do three sets of uh, arm curls. That first set, go ahead and grab a lower weight and do a set with that. Uh, that gives you a chance to make sure it feels better, uh, make sure the joints are feeling good, and gives you a chance to kind of prepare yourself mentally for the exercise. Uh, any single exercise that I do in the gym, the first set, I'm always going to do very little to no weight. And that's just a chance for me to do the movement, make sure it feels right, and then I can start building up weight to what I feel is appropriate for me. Uh, but always underestimate yourself. The worst thing you can do in the gym is let your ego get in the way. And ultimately, uh, that's usually what causes injury is ego, is trying to do too much uh, when you really shouldn't be doing that. Um, so leave your ego at the door and don't be afraid to underestimate yourself for at least one set, uh, and then you can always go up from there. Uh, like I already mentioned, use the mirror for form. Um, if you're not sure what proper form looks like, to be quite honest, you can often find some really great videos online that shows you how to do an exercise and then utilize that mirror to re uh, replicate that as close as possible. Uh, of course, you can always uh, access personal trainers or a professional to help dial that form in better. Uh, but the mirror is a good substitute if nothing else, for sure. Uh, and then this is probably partially like a, a weight room etiquette thing, but uh, really stick to just one or two sets of weights at a time. Um, part of that is just not overwhelming yourself. Focusing on one or two things at a time helps you to really just dial in and focus on what you're doing. Okay, so uh, rack area. And like I mentioned with rack areas, uh, this is any part of the gym that has uh, well, it has racks and it has the big barbells, big flat barbells. Uh, this can look very different depending on the gym. Um, I chose a picture not from our facility just to give you a variety of what it looks like. Uh, this is actually like a team training facility, so they have a lot of racks. Um, but racks are really useful for specific exercises um, that require heavy weight. So the nice thing about having racks is that it's a little bit safer because they're designed to support a lot of weight, and they usually have some sort of safety bars and things in place to catch the weight if for some reason you fail, some reason you fall. Uh, because it's heavier weight, uh, there's definitely gonna be more risk. And so you'll see my note there at the bottom, of all areas of a gym, um, this is the one space I really don't recommend if you're not comfortable with, if you're new to the gym, if you haven't used before, I wouldn't go in there unless you have someone there with you who knows what they're doing. 
Um, <laughs> this actually reminds me of my, my first experience in a weight room. Uh, when I was 15 years old, my family had a membership at a, a recreation center at a church. Uh, but anyways, um, you couldn't use the weight room until you turned 15. So literally like the day after I turned 15, I wanted to get in there. I wanted to be one of the big guys with the muscles and all of that. Um, so I went into the, the weight room on like a Saturday and it was empty. No one was in there. And I went up to the bench press. So it's actually this one on the, the bottom right of the slide here. And I'd never done it before. I had no idea how much weight I could do. I didn't know how much that bar weighed, uh, but I picked up two plates and each one was 25 pounds. And I was like, oh, I can hold them. So I'm just gonna put them on the bar and try to push it. Uh, so I put the weights on, I put those little safety clips on there that you see. Uh, and I unracked the weight, I brought it down to my chest and then I didn't bring it back up. It was way too heavy and I pinned myself to the bench. And because no one was in there, I was just stuck there. And I mean, in my head at the time, I probably thought I was there for like five hours. Realistically, I was probably there about 15 minutes, 20 minutes until someone walked by and saw me just sitting there holding the weight and finally came in and helped me get off my chest. Uh, that was a big no-no on my part. I should have known to have someone there, uh, a spotter, uh, just having someone in the gym to help me with that. Um, but because racks usually deal with heavy weight, uh, it can be a bit more dangerous because it's heavy. So I really wouldn't recommend that space if you're new to exercise, uh, if you're just trying to get into the gym. And even if you aren't uh, new, I really wouldn't recommend it unless you have someone there just to be a spotter anyways. Uh, just to make sure you don't accidentally drop the weight or anything like that. Um, but usually the space is, is designed to do heavy exercises, so barbell squats, bench press, deadlifts, other kind of Olympic lifts. Um, like I said, it's a bit more of a, a intermediate to advanced area. Uh, so if it's, you know, if you're new to the gym, for the most part, I'd probably just stay away from that area unless you're with a trainer uh, or someone who's really knowledgeable. Uh, so a few tips already mentioned, but have a spotter whenever possible. Um, if you don't work out with anyone, if you work out by yourself, you can always just ask someone in the gym or uh, if you don't feel comfortable asking just like another person working out, uh, the staff there should be able to spot you. Um, most of them are trained to do that. I know that the staff here at the rec center absolutely are trained to spot. So uh, don't be afraid to ask for someone to spot you just to make sure that if for some reason you can't bring that weight back up, they're there to help get it back up for you. Uh, once again, you know, check your ego at the door. It's, it's much more important that you stay safe and you know, live to lift another day than it is to, to try to keep your ego intact and not get any help. Um, I definitely still ask for a spotter whenever I need one and I think it's important uh, to keep that in your mind. Uh, always use the safety features of the rack. Uh, most racks, it's kind of hard to tell in this picture, uh, but a lot of racks have these, these supports that come out away from the weight. And the whole purpose is to catch the weight if for some reason you fall. Uh, I point that out because a lot of times I'll see people get on the squat rack and they'll back up away from the safety bars. Uh, and I, I have no idea why, but they'll do that. And that becomes really, really dangerous because if for some reason, Maybe your back gives out, maybe you twist your ankle when you go down. If those racks aren't there to catch the weight, you can really hurt yourself. Um, so take advantage of the safety features if you see them on there. If you're not sure, just ask someone working there and they can tell you what they are or how to adjust them. Uh, but those features are there to protect you. And so definitely wanna make sure you take advantage of those. Um, another tip is to start with the lowest weight possible. Anytime I use a rack, I'm gonna start with just the bar by itself. Uh, even if I think I can do 100 pounds more than that or whatever, I'm always gonna start with the lowest weight to just make sure it feels good, uh, make sure that my form feels okay, that nothing's hurting or anything like that, and then it can progress from there. Uh, progress slowly, uh, no use in trying to move up to the big weights quickly. Uh, and then lastly, and this is actually a very specific uh, recommendation, but if you're going to be using uh, racks, especially like a squat rack, I recommend wearing flat soled shoes. Uh, and the reason for that is any shoe, um, a lot of people wear like running shoes or tennis shoes when they work out. And while that's fine, if you're doing anything with heavy weight, uh, you don't want a lot of cushion in the shoe because that cushion creates a lot of instability. And so a lot of people can actually hurt their knees, ankles, doing squats with a lot of weight. 
uh, if they have really cushiony shoes. Running shoes are horrible for a squat rack because they're very unstable. Uh, they are not good for trying to lift heavy weight. So if you plan on using like a squat rack uh, or anything where you're standing on your feet and you're holding heavy weight, I really recommend a flat soled shoe for that kind of workout. Um, one person just asked, how much does the bar weigh? Most bars weigh 45 pounds, almost across the board. There are a few exceptions, but uh, you'll probably notice it if they do. They make some really big ones that are like for special competitions that are 55, 65. Um, and then they make a few that are 35. But by and large, if you see one of those large bars on a bench press or a squat rack, that's gonna be 45 pounds. Yeah. Uh, unless you're in, your, in Europe, then it's gonna be uh, about 20 kilos. Uh, but most of the time, 45 pounds. Good question. Uh, but yes, if you don't take anything else, maybe you're already a seasoned veteran in the gym, uh, grab some fl flat soled shoes for squat rack. Um, highly recommend to protect those, those knees and ankles. <clears throat> okay, uh, machines. So machines are uh, kind of what take up the most of the space in the gym. Uh, definitely the most expensive part from an administrative side. Uh, but gyms are, or excuse me, machines are mostly what you see when you walk into the weight room. They take up a lot of space. Uh, machines are highly specific. They are usually built with a very specific uh, muscle group or movement in mind. Uh, so they're highly specialized. They might have just like one or two uses. Uh, a chest press machine is really just going to hit the chest. Uh, you're not going to be able to do a lot of different things on it unless you get really creative. Uh, but machines are very uh, specific in design. Uh, and even though they come in many different shapes, brands, designs, uh, even within our own gym, I think we have four or five different brands, uh, they all have some specific similarities. And I think once you notice these similarities, uh, they're a lot less intimidating and more easy to deal with uh, when you walk in and use it for the first time. And the nice thing about machines is that because they're so specific, they allow you to target uh, muscles in a very controlled and safe manner. Um, form is still important, but because it's so fixed and because it's so controlled, uh, there's a little bit more, I guess, wiggle room there uh, so that you can do that safely. You know, if you were to do a, a chest press on a machine, it's going to be a little bit safer than if you just did it with some dumbbells or a barbell uh, because it's not going to allow you to go too far outside of the appropriate range of motion most of the time. So there are definitely benefits to using machines. Um, definitely helps with building up our confidence and learning what a certain movement feels like. Uh, again, like the chest press movement, what it feels like and developing that muscle memory. Uh, so there are a lot of benefits to machines. Um, I'm not gonna get too deep into this, but I, I wanted to point this out. Uh, Cause sometimes if you like sit down at a new machine, uh, I know I've done this before, is I'm just like staring at it, trying to figure out what it actually does, right? You're looking for like a graphic, trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, but an easy way to remember this is that there's really two main uh, categories of machines that you see in a gym. One is called selectorize or select to rise is the way I like to remember it. Uh, and all that is, is you move the pen uh, up and down to select the weight. Super convenient, super simple. Uh, and they made that way on purpose. It makes it very easy to use. You can go from 10 pounds to 100 pounds literally just by moving that pen. Uh, if you see any kind of tower like this picture on the left, that's going to be a selectorized machine. So if you see a tower, you know there's just going to be a pin involved and you just choose the appropriate weight uh, that you want for that machine. Uh, the other kind is going to be plate loaded. In terms of actually function, what they do, a chest press selectorized machine is going to do the same thing as a plate loaded uh, machine for a chest press. Uh, the only difference is one, you put plates on, the other one, you just select the weight you want. Uh, Honestly, the difference just comes down to mostly preference. Uh, typically, I see guys, uh, for lack of a better word, like the meatheads of the gym, the guys with the big muscles, uh, they're the ones who like plate loaded the most. And I think a big reason for that is just guys like Arnold Schwarzenegger really love using these kind of machines. Uh, the potential for amount of weight on plate loaded is a lot higher than selectorized, but otherwise there's no difference. So it really just comes down to what you prefer, uh, prefer and what you're willing to do. Uh, for most people, the Plate loaded is a bit less convenient. You've got to go find plates, pick them up, put them on there. Uh, you know, I mentioned earlier that they're all pretty close together. And the reason being is that you kind of take all the plates from one area. 
So there's usually like one or two trees where all the plates are on, you pick it up, move to your machine, uh, so on and so forth. But really, honestly, there's not a big difference in these machines. Um, it just comes down to preference. Uh, now here's uh, some pretty specific tips uh, for this. And I think this is gonna help make this a lot easier for you guys, because this stuff is always on the machines, but I feel like a lot of times we don't really pay attention or look very closely to it. No matter what brand of machine, uh, as long as it was made in like the last 30 years, uh, there's gonna be a title on it, there's gonna be some sort of graphic on it that shows what muscles are involved, and there's gonna be some sort of graphic that tells you how to use it. Uh, so these are pictures straight from our own weight room, uh, some of the different brands, but you'll notice each of them have that graphic uh, and they have like the movement that's involved. So if you're not sure what a machine does, go sit down at it and just look. Um, more than likely, somewhere on the machine's gonna have it. And depending on the brand, it might just be a quick picture or two, like that one in the top left, or it might be like that one in the bottom left where it gives you a whole novel. Um, but they're all gonna have something. And that makes it a lot easier to know what to do on that machine because the graphics can give you a pretty good idea. Uh, one thing that's really awesome though is that one on the right actually has a QR code. Uh, these are becoming more and more common in gyms. And if you have your phone on you, and even if you don't, I recommend bringing your phone with you and just scanning that QR code because a graphic is nice, but the video is gonna show you exactly how to use the machine. And it'll even show you how to adjust it. So it'll show you how to adjust the height or if there's any other part of the machine that has to move. That video is gonna show you everything. Um, I hate to say it, but in a lot of ways, that video is almost as good as having a trainer in terms of explaining the machine because those videos are really, really good at it. Um, so I, I'd recommend looking for a QR code on any machine that you sit down at. Uh, the ones at the rec center are specifically these uh, Eagle NX machines. Uh, they're also called Cybex, but doesn't matter. I would just say that if you sit in a machine and you're not sure how to use it, a lot of times there's a QR code right there that you can scan and it's gonna show you a quick video uh, to help you know how to use it. So very, very handy. Not many people know that, um, but it, it makes using the machine a lot easier. Because uh, sometimes, I don't know if you've ever done this, but I've sat at a machine before and it felt wrong and it's because there's something I need to adjust and I just didn't know it. Um, so again, the QR codes, those little graphics, very, very handy and uh, navigating the weight room and learning how to use some of this stuff. <clears throat> uh, another important fact is a lot of machines have a lot of little adjustable knobs. Uh, so like I just mentioned, sometimes a machine might feel weird and it's just because maybe the seat's too far forward or too far back. Uh, what's nice is that newer machines, uh, the knobs are very clearly marked. They're usually a bright orange or yellow or green so that you know uh, that it's there and that you can adjust it. Uh, so this is just an example of some, uh, as you can see, this one has a ton of knobs. Uh, not all of them are like this, uh, but it, it is nice because um, machines are very fixed in the path of movement, uh, but that can be tough because some of us are taller, have longer limbs. Uh, we just have different size and shaped bodies. And so these different knobs help adjust the machine to more appropriately fit our body type. Um, but that's what all these little knobs are for. So. Uh, like I said, if you see a QR code and you're not sure how to adjust these knobs, um, you can always look it up or scan that QR code. But a lot of times, if you just like pull that knob and play with it, you'll find that it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, like that one on the right, that bottom right knob there, that just adjusts how close or far the seat is. So if you're sitting way far back, maybe you just need to stand up, pull that knob and adjust the seat and it'll fix it just like that. Uh, so a lot of these machines have little knobs that you can adjust. Uh, to help fit your body better. And that's really what they're mainly for. All right, if we don't have any questions, I'll keep moving. All right, uh, so I mentioned before, there are always like a mat area at a gym. To be honest, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's just a space to do either core exercises or stretching. Um, I really don't have much to say about this, uh, but I did want to point out if you are a member at the rec center, a lot of people don't realize that we have this hallway upstairs that's just for this. Um, down in the weight room, there's a pretty small, uh, small area for stretching and doing core exercises. So if you're there during a busy time, it might fill up. Uh, but a lot of people forget about this space upstairs and it's in between the track and the cardio area. 
and it's huge. Like you can almost always find a space down there. Um, you can almost find a space down there uh, to stretch or do any kind of core exercises. Uh, I did just see a question, so I'm gonna address it real quick. Uh, Brooke asked, should you leave the machine a certain way when you are done? Um, if it's plate loaded, I would always put the plates up on the weight tree. Um, that's just, uh, that's kind of an aspect of, of gym etiquette, which we'll talk about here in a bit, but I always put the plates up. If it's one of these super adjustable machines like this, not really. Uh, if you're like exceptionally tall or had to do an adjustment that like puts it way out of whack, I would, when you're done, try to put it back in kind of a more neutral position. Uh, but that's the only thing I would suggest there. For the most part, you really don't have to worry about it because it's all so easy to change. You know, like you don't have to put it at a certain weight when you're done or anything like that because it's super simple to adjust. The only thing I would suggest is if you did like a lot to the seat to move it forward or back, uh, try to put it in like a more neutral position when you're done. Uh, just for people who might not know how to adjust it, it makes it a little easier for them to do the exercise. Uh, but for the most part, you don't necessarily have to leave it a certain way unless there's plates. I would always put the plates up because uh, sometimes someone might want to use that machine, but they may not have the strength to get that plate off. Uh, so it's just kind of being kind and courteous to put that plate back when you're done. Uh, but otherwise, no, you really don't have to leave it a certain way. Uh, just wipe it down whenever you're done. Um, and that's really the main thing you got to do. So great question. Uh, all right, so that's pretty much it in terms of um, the different areas that you're most commonly going to see in a gym. Uh, obviously, every gym is different. They're going to have uh, maybe more of this and less of that. Uh, you know, if you're in like a little hotel gym, it's not going to be very well organized, and that's okay. Uh, but for the most part, if you're at a gym, uh, a larger gym, you know, somewhere that you got to buy a membership, it's going to have all those areas almost every single time. Um, some gyms might have a little bit of uh, variety there. So for example, like Planet Fitness, they're gonna have more machines and a, a less free weights. The free weight area is usually gonna be a little smaller than other gyms. Um, that's just, that's kind of their brand, that's what they do. Uh, but generally speaking, there's always gonna be a very organized structure to it. And there's gonna be a, a way to identify what the machine does, have graphics, all that good stuff. Um, real quick, I just wanted to touch a little bit on some gym etiquette here. And the main reason I want to do this is that uh, similar to like when you want to prepare for a test or go somewhere new, it's just helpful to kind of know how you should act when you're there. It takes a little bit of the pressure off and makes you feel a little bit more confident when you show up. Uh, sometimes gyms are very good about like having the rules or guidelines up on a poster or something like that. Some aren't. Um, I think we do a pretty good job here, but there are a lot of just kind of unspoken rules uh, in a lot of fitness facilities that they don't ever tell you uh, until you do something wrong, right? And then someone mentions it to you and that can be awkward or embarrassing or whatever. Uh, so these are just a few etiquette, a uh, few rules I, I recommend following whenever you go into the weight room. Uh, one is always return equipment when you're finished. Uh, so, you know, we talked about machines with plates. When you're done, try to put them back. Uh, whenever you're done with dumbbells, uh, put them back on the rack. Um, kind of going along with that is I, I would never recommend taking equipment too far from where you got it. Usually it's in that specific space for a reason. Uh, and if for some reason you forgot it and moved it across the gym, uh, it can be hard to track that down. So just from a, an employee standpoint, uh, ask that you don't take the equipment too far from where it is. There's usually a purpose for where it's at. Uh, for example, in the rec center, uh, we try to avoid taking the weights outside of the weight room area because there's a lot of tile, and if someone drops it, it shatters the tile. It's a big ordeal. Plate, uh, weights go missing. Um, so for the most part, I try to keep equipment close to where you found it. Uh, whenever you're done, always wipe it down, um, not just because of COVID, but just because that's uh, a nice thing to do, right, is not leaving your, your sweat or anything like that on equipment. Um, always recommend cleaning it whenever you're done uh, before moving on to the next thing. Um, uh, this one is a little bit less known, but I recommend not bringing your, your gym bag into the weight room. This is a very common rule that you don't find out until someone comes up and tells you. Uh, but the reason for that is it's a huge tripping hazard. You'd be shocked by how many people trip on those things and they hit their head on a piece of equipment or something like that. So a lot of gyms will come up and tell you if you have your bag with you in the weight room to, to take it somewhere else. Uh, and that's just because it's a tripping hazard. Uh, and it's also, you know, just to keep your belongings uh, close. Um, 
I like to think that most people in the gym are ethical and aren't going to steal stuff, but you just never know what can happen. Um, I also recommend wearing appropriate tire. And in this case, I'm not talking about, uh, well, what I'm talking about with appropriate tire is uh, not wearing clothes that have any kind of like metal or clips, belt buckles, stuff like that. That's something that people don't think about a lot, but that actually can cause a lot of damage to machines. Um, any kind of like little metal buttons or things that rub on the equipment can actually wear it down really fast. So that's one reason to wear appropriate uh, workout attire when you're working out. It's not just because it's uh, better for you in terms of movement and having to sweat, stuff like that, but it also uh, keeps the equipment in better condition longer. Um, already mentioned, you know, keep personal belongings close. Uh, it might not be that someone would steal something, but if you, you know, leave your phone sitting on a piece of equipment, uh, people might think it's in use and they won't use it. So it's just kind of being kind and courteous to others to keep your stuff close with you. Uh, I recommend not using a piece of equipment more than five minutes. Uh, that's if the gym's busy or if there's not another one that's open and available. Uh, you know, if you're on the only chest press machine, uh, it can be kind of rude if you stay there for a really long time, especially if you're just taking long breaks, sitting, relaxing. Um, definitely want to try to, to be courteous of other people and what they're trying to achieve in the gym as well. So having a shared space, definitely want to be considerate of others uh, and try to keep moving as best you can. Uh, and then lastly is keeping a noise to a minimum. I'm sure no one on here does this, uh, but really loud grunting, slamming, uh, things to do that uh, can intimidate other people. You know, we want to try to create an environment that's welcoming for everyone. And, and part of that is, is trying to, to keep to yourself to a reasonable amount. Uh, you know, not walking around with like a Bluetooth speaker, cranking up your music really loud. Uh, stuff like that is, is, can be kind of rude, so I really wouldn't recommend it. Um, just trying to, to keep to yourself for the most part. Um, but yeah, those are just some basic uh, etiquette, guidelines, suggestions that I have. Uh, some rules that a lot of times you might not see or hear about until someone points it out. So I just wanted to touch on those few things. Um, but we've got some time to answer questions. I'd love to do that. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you got. So feel free, feel free uh, to throw them in the chat or the Q&A. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and return to some of these uh, while you guys are asking more. But um, back to the question about... Uh, do you know what is scientifically beneficial to a hot workout? What is your personal opinion? Um, so basically one of the benefits first off with doing something in like a heated environment is that it warms your body up a lot faster. That's actually really good for avoiding injury because uh, one of the big reasons that we experience injury is that our joints aren't warmed up. So if our joints aren't warmed up a lot of time, they're less elastic. So we might, uh, move a certain way and that overstretches a tendon that can cause a strain that can cause a tear in the muscle. Uh, so doing something in a hot environment warms up our body quicker. Uh, there's also a lot of, of um, research that suggests that sweating a lot is really good for exercise in general. So doing something in a hot room is just going to make you sweat more. So it's going to help get some of those impurities out. Uh, as long as you shower after, then it's going to be really good for, for helping with that. I wouldn't say there's anything magical about uh, hot or like Bakram yoga, for example. Uh, there's not anything magical about it, uh, but it is good to, to be very warm when you're exercising because it makes our bodies move better and they're optimally more elastic uh, when we do that. So there is definitely a benefit. I wouldn't say it's anything revolutionary, uh, but it's not completely out of nowhere either. There is some, some uh, logic to it for sure. Good question. Um, someone asked, are there trainers to assist those wanting to get back into the gym? Uh, almost every single gym is going to have personal training, or not every single, but a lot of them. Uh, the exception might be some like the 24-hour gyms. They may not have that. I know, for example, we obviously we have personal trainers, and we either do packages of sessions or we can do like a consultation. Uh, for some people, all they need is a consultation so we can kind of uh, figure out a program that works for you. Maybe discuss some of the machines in the weight room that you're not real comfortable with. Um, that's what we have to offer. I know gyms like, uh, you know, Planet Fitness, they're going to have someone that can kind of show you around a little bit and give you an idea of how to use stuff. Um, I would recommend trying to find a place that has a, a trainer. Um, and, and a lot of gyms will offer that for free for like a single session, like a chance to kind of um, show you around, stuff like that. The reason being is they're trying to sell you it. Uh, but a lot of times they will give you like a free session, something like that to show you around. 
Uh, we don't do free sessions, but we can do a one-time consultation with you if that's what you're looking for. Um, and most gyms will have some sort of option like that. That's a good question. Uh, someone asked, you know, what are the least busy times in the weight area? Uh, as an older adult, I always avoid the weights uh, during busy student times. Very fair question. Um, so yes, uh, right now that it's summertime, it's a great time to be in the weight room because it's much uh, calmer and more empty. I would say the peak times are going to be from about four o'clock to about eight o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and then there's sometimes a, a brief rush in the early morning from like six to eight. But even six to eight is not going to be so busy that you can't get around and do what you need to do. I'd say really afternoon time is absolute busiest. So you, if you can come in any time outside of that, uh, you're going to be good to go. Even in the busiest part of the semester, if you come at like 10 a.m. or like three o'clock, if you're able to maybe move your lunch around or something like that, um, it's going to be pretty dead and you can pretty much have your choice of machines. Um, so I, I would recommend really the afternoon is the busiest time. And so if you're wanting to try to come at a, a calmer time, uh, I would avoid the afternoons, especially during the week. Weekends, not so bad. If you come in at like three o'clock on a Sunday, it's really not going to be busy. Four or five o'clock on a Sunday, it's not bad. Um, really, it's during the week and in the afternoon. That's when it's absolutely the busiest. Great question. Uh, I'm going to check the chat. I think we got a few there. Um, someone mentioned at the gym, I'm always intimidated by others working on equipment I want to use. Many times they rest on the equipment between sets. Is that appropriate? Uh, and if not, how do you do hand, how do you handle it? That's a really good question. Um, if it's busy, then it's less appropriate to just sit there. Um, but really it, it comes down to amount of time. Uh, I would say if, if they're sitting there for more than like two or three minutes, if they're just sitting there playing with their phone, uh, there's nothing wrong with going up and just asking like, hey, you mind if I, I work in with you? So, you know, they get up, you use it and they can use it again, something like that. Uh, usually that's the most polite way to be like, hey, you're, you're taking too long. It's just to be like, hey, you mind if I work in or, you know, hey, um, you know, how many more sets do you have? That's usually a polite way to just kind of check with them uh, and one, find out how much longer they on it, but also to let them know that you're kind of waiting to use it. Um, yeah, that's, all, that's always a tough one. Uh, some people respond better than others, but I would just recommend just being like, hey, uh, you know, how many more sets do you have? Do you mind if I work in and use that machine? Um, a lot of times, uh, it, if you're going in there when it's busy, it's, it's best to try to be as flexible as you can. You know, if you have eight exercises you're going to do and one's not available, I'd recommend skipping that one and then coming back to it later when it is. Um, but the, the best thing you can do is just ask uh, if it's if it's really slow and empty, uh, people might take a little longer. In that case, I wouldn't say it's super inappropriate. Um, I would just make a point to try to work around. Uh, the more you get comfortable with the gym, the more you'll realize is there's a lot of different alternatives to any given exercise. Uh, I understand that that can take some time and effort, but uh, if there's one machine in particular that like, you really want to use, but it always seems to be full, uh, one machine I think about is like that lap pull down machine that has a bar and a cable and you pull down to your chest. That one is always popular. Uh, what I would recommend is looking up some alternatives online. And you could literally just look up alternative for lat pull down and you'll find a lot of different options. So if for some reason you get to that piece and it's taken and it's always taken, you can find a different option uh, so that you don't have to sit around and wait for someone to free up a piece of equipment. Now that's a really good question and not, not an easy one to do for sure. Uh, one person asked, how do we find out about trainers scheduling a session? Uh, so since I coordinate the personal training program, you can just reach out to me. Uh, I have my contact info right there. You can shoot me an email, give me a call. I can talk to you more about it. Um, as far as scheduling goes, if the gym is open, uh, we can do sessions. So that's any time from typically 5.30 in the morning to I think we close usually like 10 o'clock at night. Uh, so it's a really broad range. So more than likely, we're going to have at least one trainer that's willing to train at that time. You know, we've got about 20 on staff. Uh, so we can definitely find someone that can probably work with your schedule. Uh, but if the gym is open, then we can train. So uh, a lot of options there. Uh, in terms of, of training sessions, stuff like that, we do individual one-on-one -on -one training. Uh, we can do partner training. So maybe you have a, a friend that wants to work out with you. Uh, I will say that if you do it that way, that's actually a really cost effective. Um, I think if you do partner training, each session ends up being like uh, around $20 or a little less, which is incredibly low. 
Um, I know that the most that you'll pay for like an individual one-on-one -on -one session is $25 and that's if you buy four. Uh, but the more that you get, the cheaper each session gets. So in terms of rates, you really can't beat the ones we have at the rec center. Um, uh, but yeah, we do have a lot of different options for personal training. So just feel free to reach out to me if you have a question about that. Uh, I want to check, see if there's any other questions. I'll keep hanging around in case you got some. Um, but yeah, any questions about programming, about navigating the weight room? You know, like I said, my goal for this is to help you guys feel comfortable when you walk into a weight room. And that's hard to do. Uh, it's hard to feel comfortable when you're going into a place that's outside of your comfort zone, outside of, of, of really anything you're used to, and then expect to succeed in there. So kind of think of this as like a precursor to help make you feel a little more comfortable uh, when you walk in there. Uh, and when all else fails, it might be nice to find someone, whether it's a trainer or a friend that you know exercises regularly, and ask them to kind of show you the ropes. Uh, what you'll actually find is that most people, if they live in the gym, you know, you see those guys are in there all the time, they would love to talk about it. Uh, so they might look intimidating or standoffish, but you know, unless they have big headphones covering their ears, most of the time they're more than happy to stop and answer a question. Uh, I know I always am, and um, you know, when I first started walking into the weight room when I was in college, I didn't know at all what I was doing. And oftentimes, someone would just come up and be like, hey, you're doing that wrong. And they would show me how to do it. And I may have been embarrassed at first, but ultimately it made me better at what I was doing. So I, I do appreciate that. Uh, a lot of people are more than happy to help. Um, sometimes you just got to ask, uh, even if it's just asking the staff, because most of the times the staff do know what they're doing and they can definitely be helpful. All right, well, if we don't have any more questions, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate, uh, oh, I just saw a new one. Um, how many times should you do weights a week? That's a great question. Uh, minimum, I would say at least twice a week. Uh, twice a week is going to uh, do enough that you can continually see prog progress. And uh, really you could do more than that, um, but I would cap it at about five days a week. Uh, really, you need to get at least some rest uh, to help your muscles recuperate and to rebuild. Uh, so if you're doing something like five or six days a week, then it either needs to be pretty short volume, like maybe like 30 minutes, uh, or you need to be alternating body parts so that some of your body is getting rest. So typically people I know that do like five or six days a week, they're very specific in what they're doing. So they're going to do shoulders and they're going to do chest and they're going to do back and they're going to do legs. Uh, but you want to make sure that you're getting at least a day or two of rest. So really, personally, I'm going to do three or four days a week. Um, but anywhere from two to four is, is very normal and acceptable. Um, I wouldn't do more than five or six. That's a lot. <clears throat> All right. Someone asked uh, how much time for each session. Uh, it depends on how much you're doing um, and how fast you go. Uh, you can get a lot done in 20 minutes if you're working fast. Uh, what I would say is that the, the best thing to do is think more about uh, total volume. So I would say anywhere from, from five to eight exercises is a good number of exercises to do when you're in the gym. And anywhere from two to four sets of each exercise. So again, time-wise, it really just depends on, on how much rest you're taking, um, you know, how fast you're going, if you're doing like a circuit of a bunch of things at once, or if you're just doing one exercise at a time. Um, generally, if you're spending more than an hour in the gym, uh, what that tells me is that you're probably trying to like be a bodybuilder, you're trying to build a lot of strength, uh, or you're just sitting around chatting a lot. Uh, me, myself, I rarely work out for longer than an hour because after that, I'm probably wasting a lot of time. Um, you can get a lot done in 20, 30 minutes, even 45 minutes. Um, more than an hour, then more than likely there's probably a lot of free time in there. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but, uh, you know, there's no reason to feel like you need to spend an hour, hour and a half to get results. It really just comes down to volume and trying to get a lot of stuff done. So again, I recommend somewhere between five and eight exercises, two to four sets of each exercise. Good question. <clears throat> All right, uh, someone asked, do you recommend using gloves? Um, it's up to you. Uh, some people don't like calluses on their hands. They don't like having rough hands. If you don't wear gloves and you use weights a lot, 
you're probably going to develop calluses. Uh, I definitely have calluses on my hands. I kind of like them, but that's not for everyone. So if you don't want to build up calluses, I would recommend wearing some gloves. Uh, definitely not needed uh, by any means, but really just comes down to how much you care about uh, building up calluses and kind of roughing up your skin. Because uh, using weights will rough up your skin, especially if you start using heavier weights. Good question. All right. Well, thank you so much again for tuning in, guys. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful hey, week. I hope you tune in again. Uh, I usually do these a couple times a year or more, so I'm more than happy to, uh, to do more here in the future. But if you ever have any questions about anything fitness related, I love just talking about this stuff. I'm more than happy to answer programming questions, personal training questions, whatever it is you got. Just shoot me an email or give me a call uh, at that info there, and I'm more than happy to respond. Uh, hey, Charles, we got a couple That is it. Thank you so much, guys. Y'all have a wonderful day. We've got a couple questions in the chat. We got more in the chat? Yes. Thank you, Ashley. I did not see those. Let's see. I'm going to try to get back to the chat. There we go. Okay. Uh, ooh, yeah, we got some good ones. Okay. Uh, one person asked, how do you split up the week? Uh, what I would say is a general good goal is to hit the entire body twice a week. Uh, so if you're doing two workouts, that would be two full body workouts. Um, or, you know, if you do like say three workouts a week, you could do upper and then lower and then full body. Um, that's the general recommendation though, is trying to hit the full body twice a week. Uh, obviously once is kind of the minimum. So if nothing else, at least start with doing full body once a week. So if you were to do it that way, you know, you could do five days a week and it could be uh, arms, it could be chest, back, legs, core. Um, the main thing though, is just to focus on making sure you're getting the whole body and how you split it up is totally up to you on what you would prefer. Um, uh, someone asks uh, resistance slash strength versus cardio. Uh, that's going to depend on your goals. Uh, for the most part though, um, if you want to go like at a really slow pace and just focus on the weights, uh, you're going to really get one or two main benefits out of that. Uh, and when I say benefits, I'm talking really specifically about like strength uh, versus this is cardio or, or uh, stamina. Um, if you go slow, it's mostly just going to focus on strength. Uh, that's really the biggest benefit to taking long rest periods. Uh, you can still gain muscle if you go quicker. So going at a faster pace. So me personally, I'm going to go at a faster pace because my biggest goal is not to just gain a lot of muscle. I'm not super concerned about getting really strong. Um, because I can still gain muscle and I can still get strong by not taking long breaks. It's just that if you take long breaks, uh, it becomes very specific. So for most people, I recommend trying to pick a pace that you can go fairly quickly. Um, that's going to give you both cardiovascular benefits and strength benefits at the same time. That's usually my recommendation. It's also just a good use of time. Uh, someone said, how many reps in a set? Uh, the lower reps, the more you're focusing on strength. Uh, anywhere though between 8 and 15 is going to be well-rounded for everyone. So you're going to get strength benefits. You're going to get benefits that can help uh, increase muscle mass if that's what you want. But 8 to 15 is a very good basic range where you'll continually see uh, results. If you, keep, if you go much higher than that, we start getting a little bit away from the realm of, of resistance training and it becomes a little bit more cardio related. Uh, so 8 to, to 15 is a very good rep range. All right, any other questions? I think I got it all. Uh, but again, if you do think of something else at another time, please shoot me an email, give me a call. Uh, more than happy to chat more with you guys. All right, well, thank you so much, everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this, but we are rec recording this, and I know that uh, Health Promotion and Wellness, they do upload these to their website, so I believe they do have a nice stockpile of of these uh, webinars so you can always come back and access this later uh, but thank you so much everyone you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you soon